Hello everybody, in this video we are going to talk about inequalities and the reason why we're going over this now is because we need to use the symbols of inequality to describe domains and ranges. And the next video you're going to watch in the actual assigned video is all about domain and range. So let's get started and review the symbols. So first off we have the symbol of less than and then we have the symbol of less than or equal to. Then we have the symbol of greater than, and the symbol of greater than or equal to, and the symbol of not equal to. And these things we're going to need for domain and range. Let's talk about what inequalities are in terms of a number line. So let's look at the difference between x is less than 3 and x is less than or equal to 3. So we know less than means numbers are, that are smaller because remember the alligator mouth opens to the bigger number, so three is a bigger number. And so what I want on the number line when I say x is less than three is I want the numbers like 2.99 and 2.98 and all the way down zero, negative one, negative whatever, all the way down to negative infinity. And that symbol there is called a lemnus gate and it's just the name of the curve that represents infinity. And so this direction on the number line goes infinitely in the negative, so that's why we say negative infinity. And I need to draw some way, I need to draw x is less than 3 on a number line. I don't want 3, okay, because this is strictly less than. You can think of this as strictly, meaning I don't want 3, I want everything less than 3. But 3 is my endpoint. So the way to show the endpoint that is not included is as an open dot, okay? This is not included, it is called open. But I want everything less than three. So I'm gonna draw a ray that goes towards negative infinity. And this is a picture of all of the numbers that are less than three. And the difference between less than three or less than or equal to three is this dot here. Because when I say less than or equal to, it doesn't mean you can be both less than and equal to at the same time. That makes no sense whatsoever. But what it does mean is that I can either be less than 3 or I can be 3, which means it is okay to be 3. So instead of having an open dot, I have a closed dot. And we say this is included. And sometimes you'll hear me say inclusive or exclusive means the same thing. These are closed also known as filled in, okay? Included, inclusive. This is excluded, exclusive, excluded. Don't want three, want three, okay? So it's a very subtle difference. It makes a huge impact on mathematics. I don't want the endpoint, no bar underneath. I want the endpoint, bar underneath. Now the arrow still goes the same direction. It still goes towards negative infinity. Now knowing this, Looking at the next set, these are greater than. So greater than goes towards positive infinity. So I write a lemnus gate without the negative sign. In this case, I want inclusive because the or equal to means inclusive. So filled in dot greater than negative three means towards positive infinity. And this one, exclusive because there's no line underneath, means open dot towards positive infinity. Not equal to is kind of interesting because not equal to means I want every single number except that one. So looking at these symbols, right, I need to go to negative and positive infinity, but I need to think about what's going on with that three, and I don't want a three, so I'm gonna be open at three. So not equal to three means it's open there. And in contrast, if you really wanted to know what x equals 3 looked like on a number line, it's just 3 with the closed dot on it. So these are the symbols of inequality up here. You need to remember open dot, closed dot, open dot, closed. This one has open and equal has closed. Now it gets really inconvenient to have to draw a number line every time you have an inequality, so mathematicians came up with a brand new way of writing 
parts of the number line without actually drawing the number line. And it's called interval notation. And it means the same thing as these inequalities. It means the same thing as this graph but it just looks a little different. So I'm going to show you interval notation because that's the more advanced notation. That's the notation you're going to use in pre-calculus and calculus and beyond. So now that we've reviewed the symbols of inequality and what the graphs look like, I'm going to teach you something called interval notation. And all interval notation is, is the number line without the number line. I know that sounds crazy, but let me show you an example. All right, so if I have the whole number line from negative infinity to positive infinity, meaning all real numbers, every single real number, this is what it looks like in interval notation. So you see negative infinity to infinity. These are always read from left to right. This tells you where my leftmost number is. This tells you where my rightmost number is. And if you see an infinity, it means it went forever. So it goes forever in the negatives and forever in the positives. So it's like the number line without the line. And you see these two symbols are just bing, put right in there. So the leftmost number of your chunk of the number line goes there. The rightmost number goes there. Okay? So Whenever you have to write all reals, this is what it is in interval notation. Notice that they are parentheses. You always use parentheses with infinities in interval notation. And I'm going to explain why. Because mathematicians have decided that the parentheses means open, meaning exclusive. And you can never actually count to infinity, so it's always open. You can never get to the end, so it's open. And let's see what kind of impact this has when I actually don't want the entire number line, I just want a piece of the number line. And we'll look specifically at the piece x is less than three. So if I think about the graph of x is less than three, negative infinity, infinity, there's a three here, and we just reviewed that this is going to be an open dot and an arrow going this way. So interval notation has to give me this chunk of the number line here without actually drawing the line. So remember, infinities get parentheses, so negative infinity is where it starts. I start way, way, way over there in the negative infinities. But then I'm going to go to 3 and stop. Because I don't want anything past 3, I want to stop at 3. And I don't want to include 3, so I'm going to put parentheses. And this is interval notation for x is less than 3. And what's the difference between x is less than 3 and x is less than or equal to 3? That is now the question. What does that look like? Well, on a number line, I know this starts with a closed dot at 3 and goes towards infinity, negative infinity, I should say. And I remember interval notation is the chunk of the number line without the line. So I chop off and I just think, I just want this piece right here. So I want to start off at negative infinity. I get those parentheses going. And I want to stop at 3. But I can't use the parentheses because we've already decided that the parentheses mean open. So well, I need another symbol for closed. And they wanted something simple, they being mathematicians, and so they picked the squared off bracket. So brackets in interval notation mean closed, inclusive. So when I see this notation right here, I know that I want the chunk of the number line that goes infinitely negative, stops at 3, and includes 3. So this leaves us with the greater thans. So x is greater than 3. If I look at x is greater than 3 on the number line, I have a 3, an open dot, and I'm going to go towards positive infinity. And so I want this chunk of the number line. Reading from left to right, the interval I want starts at 3. Always read from left to right. So I start at 3, and I'm going to go towards infinity. 
but I don't want the three, so I need the exclusive or open endpoint, which is an interval notation of parentheses, and infinities are always open. Bing. So I always put parentheses for infinities. And then the difference between that and greater than or equal to three is the type of dot on the graph. Remember, those are the filled in ones, the inclusive ones. Once again, my interval goes from three to infinity, and I, infinities always get parentheses, they're always open, but I want the three, so I'm gonna use a bracket. And that's how I use interval notation. Now these two things mean the exact same thing. This is using inequalities, this is using interval notation. And you might be wondering what x is not equal to three looks like. Remember on the number line, that looks like that, right? And so if I think about the chunks I want here, and this is this was really special, I have two chunks that I want. I want to go from negative infinity to three. I don't want to include three though, so parentheses, parentheses. And then I want the chunk that starts at three and goes to infinity. So I want these two chunks with that three not included. And so these are the two intervals I want. I want the interval that goes from negative infinity to three exclusive and three to infinity exclusive, not included. But I have to combine these two, and what I combine those two is with a U, a U standing for union, meaning I want to put these two things together to be my total interval. And this is interval notation for that. Now, this is much more inconvenient than this, so if you had a choice and you had to express x is not equal to 3, uh, you're going to pick that one, right? This is kind of annoying. So now it's time for a fancy example. And in this example, we're going to look at the chunk of the number line that starts at three and goes to eight. Three is exclusive and eight is inclusive. Now, I just want this chunk. So remember, I look at the leftmost endpoint, which is three, and then the rightmost endpoint, which in this case is eight. There are no infinities because I just want that little chunk. And then I just have to decide, parentheses, bracket, remember open, parentheses, closed, bracket. So this interval here, exclusive three to inclusive eight, is that chunk of the number line. Now in terms of an inequality, I'm looking for x values that are between three and eight, where three is exclusive and eight is inclusive. And if you always make the smallest number on the left and the biggest number on the right, then you always have to use the less thans. And they all, see how they both go in the same direction? Less thans. And then I just have to decide if it's strictly or less than or equal to. And this, this, and this all represent the exact same thing. 